How were you feeling about your relationship with Mr. Depp? May we have the exhibit taken away okay, from... Sure. Thank you. I, um, by June, I was so torn. I was so in love with this person because when it was good, it was so good. You've never felt love like that. At least that's how it felt. <laughs> so much. I felt like he recognized me and I recognized him and there was just something there that that was the love of my life. And he was. He was, but he was also this other thing. He was also this other thing. And that other thing was awful, awful thing that would come out and take over. And it was, you couldn't see the Johnny I loved underneath it. It was this other thing. And no one told him, no one was honest with him. No one, you know, he'd pass out in his own vomit. He'd lose control of his body, his, you know, he'd lose control and everyone would clean up after him. I cleaned up after him. I mean, this man lost control of his bowels and I cleaned up after him. His, his, his security cleaned up after him, changed his pants in front of me. He would pass out in his own sick. You know, and then he'd walk around saying he didn't have a problem until he did, until he couldn't support it anymore and he'd get clean and he'd get sober and then he was this thing again, this thing that made me feel so loved, that made me feel like, like my, like my soulmate is, cheesy as that sounds, I just felt like he knew me and I recognized something in him, either some part of my makeup and my background or something that I just got it. And I loved him and understood him. It, it just got so scary, the other part of him. And in June, I wanted, I wanted to leave him. I wanted to, I didn't want to leave him. I, I wanted to want to leave him. I wanted him to get better. And he expressed to me so many times when he was in that period of getting clean and sober, he would tell me, you saved my life. Baby girl, you saved my life. Everyone else was saying that to me and I believed it. You know, if everyone else was saying it, he was saying it, I thought just like his other friends who had gotten clean and sober and stayed that way, his older friends, these rock stars that he hung out with that had like gotten clean and sober and they had 20, 30 years, something, you know, I thought, and Johnny told me he w would be that person, that he was gonna be that person and I believed it. I had so much, I looked at that man twice my age, you know, I was, 25, looking at this man twice my age and I saw hope and like promise. I had so much hope. You know, the whole thing, kids and growing old together, sort of hope. If it was just for this one thing that he could do, which would save his life, which would be to get clean and sober. And I believed it. And I wrote this letter to myself, uh, among many letters to myself. Objection, you say. Thought, All she did was refer to that she wrote it. She isn't saying what she uh, said. I'll rule for that. Thank point. you. Okay. I wrote that letter because I thought it would be read to him. I could read it to him. I could say it to him in intervention, you know, in help. And he would, he would later thank me for... As he did, as he used to thank me all the time for saving his life. Just, I... 
Did there come a time later in June that you finally met Johnny's kids? <sighs> yeah. I'm sorry. Um... Yeah, I, um... I finally met them in the summer of 2013. I had been with Johnny for over a year, maybe like a year and a half at this point, is my best guess. And I was dying to meet them, you know, dying to get to know these kids. I felt like I knew them already. Uh, I had his daughters, uh, and actually, and Jack's, it, both, both of his kids' art on my fridge, and I had never even met them. You know, Johnny brought them over one day and kindly given them to me, and I had them up on my fridge because I felt like I knew them, just how much he talked about them, and I finally got to meet them um, at the Lone Ranger premiere at Disneyland, uh, yeah, summer 2013. So then I'm going to jump to, and, and it's not much of a jump, to June 26, 2013. Um, there was a plane ride to Russia with Johnny. Do you recall that? Yes. Well, tell the jury about that particular event. Uh, well, that was the first and last time I ever um, <laughs> decided it would be a, a decent idea to do drugs with Johnny. Um, I did MDMA with or did him DMA with him on the plane, which was as stupid as it may sound. Um, I just had never, I was very against, obviously the cocaine had been a, a problem. I was very much against him using cocaine. I was against the drinking, supportive of the sobriety, I, you know, but I'm 26 maybe uh, ish. And I, I wanted, you know, I had never heard of anyone making MDMA uh, like what I had, I had done MDMA before, you know, I thought it's a lovey drug. It's a, you know, it's like a kind of, I never knew anyone to uh, get violent on it. And, um, you know, I thought, well, this is a relatively contained environment maybe this will be different. Maybe I can be a good cop and be part of the, you know, like I don't have to be the lesbian camp counselor all the time, as you would say. You know, I can maybe be the fun girlfriend. And I learned the hard way that that was not happening. <laughs> um, so what happened? Well, we took, um, we took MDMA. I took a, a capsule, um, it's like a powder in a capsule. I took a capsule and Johnny took uh, several. I didn't count, but, um, you know, it's very different when you see someone take one versus a handful of something. But nothing seemed to set any alarm bells off. And it, things were going fine until, um, <laughs> until the flight attendant got involved. The flight attendant came by, was engaging with us, uh, I, I don't think that they're really, it felt like it was before the effects of the drug um, took over. It was, so it was relatively quick, soon after we first took our dose. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to pause right here. We're going to pick it right up where we left off. But